Hey, hey, y'all. Allison here. I wanted to quickly thank you for listening to our podcast. I know you're about to get a lot of valuable information from it, but I also wanted to hop in and share with you guys a free SOP, which stands for Standard Operating Procedure. We use this SOP every single day in our agency to authentically grow and engage our audiences on social. It is 1000% free and I'd love for you to have it and use it in your biz as well. So just go to umaimarketing.com slash engage to go download. All right. Cheers. All right. Hey everyone. Welcome to the Umai Social Circle. Today we are talking about the Umai backstory. It's Karen and I's uh, story of how we met. We like to call this the Umai backstory that nobody asked for. So enjoy. Yeah. You didn't ask for it, but we're going to give it to you. It'll be fun. We promise. Yeah. So it all started way back when. It was my first, <clears throat> my first job out of college. Was it your second job out of college? It was my first job, but I interned before that for well, free for no money. Yeah. This was, yeah, back in the day when you didn't get paid for your internships and and you were happy about it <laughs> yeah yeah you were stoked to have the opportunity so but we pay our interns so just <laughs> yeah we find out. Yeah. <laughs> we're not salty at all <laughs> oh, so this it had this all started at a little place in Austin filled to the brim with pageant and prom dresses with rhinestones and sparkles with lots of sparkles I would find rhinestones in my shoes when I came home that only happened twice I, it doesn't it's not like it happened all the time but <laughs> <laughs> so yeah we were there uh selling prom dresses selling pageant dresses and we really bonded over that we definitely didn't fit in um <laughs> which is you know it was nice um to have someone else that didn't quite understand why the why behind pageants so that was nice but yeah Karen did you even go to prom yeah I went to prom we had we had like a junior and a senior prom went to both years of prom had a blast don't remember much of it but it was a good time and I remember picking out my dress and did you go to prom yeah I went to prom I went to prom both years too and my senior year I designed my own prom dress at that point I was well yeah I designed it and then my mom sewed it because I had to be different in every single way like <laughs> <laughs> like I had to I don't know I couldn't follow the rules like I would I'd get sent to the principal's office because I would you got sent to the principal. I couldn't follow office? any of the rules. And so that was one of the things I wanted to be different. <laughs> and so I chose my fabric from Joanne's fabric. And it was, you know, Halloween fabric. <laughs> <laughs> so my dress was made with Halloween fabric and I loved it. I thought it was the I thought it was the coolest thing. And I'm pretty sure I looked really good. Time will tell. But <laughs> Well, the thing is, when you say things like that, you have to follow it up with evidence. Like, I yeah. need to see the proof of that. Yeah, we need Was it like, because in my head, I'm like, this is like a spider web. It's like kind black. Of. What? Mm -hmm. Oh, gosh. Well, it's, yeah, it's not a spider web, but it was black and gold. And it was more of like an, an ode to Halloween. Um, I was really oh. impressed with the fabric that Joann's was carrying that year. So <laughs> shout out to Joann's in Waco, Texas. Exactly. Sponsor us. Exactly. So anyways. <laughs> oh, well, I can't wait to see that. Oh, so it was kind of like you were meant to work for a prom dress designer because you had the experience. Did you put that on your resume? Oh my God. Did I put design my own prom dress? <laughs> no, I did not. Really? So I interned uh, in La La Land. Uh, that's LA oh, for y'all that don't know. And I interned for a showroom. It, it was called uh, Open Showroom and it was really cool streetwear. We, we styled like uh, local like rappers and artists and it was mm. so cool. 
and I also didn't really fit in there either, let's be honest. <laughs> I tried. I know in your head you fit in there, and I like that. <laughs> and uh, so somehow I got into the, the fashion world. I studied political science in college, but got into the fashion world, and it was fun because, you know, it's all about art, and, and so I wanted to kind of pursue it. It was the only job experience I had other than working you know, tiny, small jobs throughout high school. And, uh, and the only, I knew I wanted to live in Austin and the only designer here basically felt like that prom and pageant place so, that I worked for. Okay. So like that was, you were, you were into it. You were like, I'm doing fashion. This is what I'm going to do. Yeah. I mean, when I was younger, I collected magazines and I would study them so that I would know all of the designers. And I still like know all the designers, but I never, it's like, I don't like, it's like, I like it, but I don't like it. You know, I don't like what it's about sometimes, but I do like wearable art. I like functional art. I love that. And for those of you that do not know Allison, she will not spend money on clothing now. I don't <laughs> spend money on clothing. People give me hand-me-downs because they hate how I dress that much. And I'm just usually wearing cut-off jean shorts and a t-shirt. So. Hey, aren't we all? <laughs> it's a pandemic. Let us live our lives. Anyways, yeah, enough about that background. Karen, let's, so you applied to a content specialist role. Yeah, I mean, I think the job title is just straight up marketing coordinator. But oh. so much of the job description was like, copywriting and content creation and social media and so I was just like okay because I remember I this is just like the the worst thing to say for any journalism student out there like you can do it you're doing great keep it up but I was in just like this class this intro journalism class of like 200 people and I remember the professor great professor Robert Jensen shout out he was just like look around only one or two of you will become a journalist. And I was just like, that is so harsh. <laughs> like, I am not the smartest person in this room. I am not the most passionate about journalism. What on earth am I going to do? So when I graduated and I saw this job, I was like, ooh, yeah, fashion, let's do it. And it was, I mean, it was, it, there were so many great things about it. We worked with a couple really cool people, the president of the company, my and my boss, like they were totally cool. And I really liked working with them. And we, we got, I mean, we got to do some really cool stuff. That's true. And I love that family still. I mean, <laughs> they, they are, I mean, a family business is hard and, uh, you know, they made me feel like family, which I really like, but can we take it back to what you said about college professors? Because I Please. feel like that is what, I feel like it's a professor's job to, <laughs> to say that, like to let you know that you're probably not going to make it. I feel like that's the thing pro all professors say. I mean, they got to speak their truth. They're not lying. <laughs> I can't, like, none of the journalism students, maybe one or two that I was friends with, well, that's not true. There was, there was a good handful of them doing, doing their thing. Yeah. It's like but, their job to kill your hopes and dreams. I mean, I'm glad, I'm glad he did because it brought me here. And <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. yeah, but the pageant dress, we... Side note, we went to New York Fashion Week. We got to run around on the subway trying to find goods for the DJ that was going to be at the fashion show. Yeah. I mean, it was a good time, but I don't know how much of that, how much of that was really me learning about marketing, more me just learning how to have a real job. Yeah. Yeah, that job was hard for both of us, I think. <laughs> it was the first job out of high school, and it was, I mean, we had a lot of responsibilities. So after that, what happened? Where did you, where did you go? After that, I bounced out so quickly from there. Um, abruptly, some may say. That's for a different podcast. <laughs> uh, and I was searching Craigslist. I was searching the job boards and just trying to find my way, figure out what I wanted. And 
along comes this Craig's Craigslist ad for a marketing coordinator at Vital Farm. Craigslist. Craigslist was the place to find jobs. That was where I found my first job too. I oh. forgot about that. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Craigslist. Now what? it's like, don't get on Craigslist. <laughs> like, where am I going? What am I going to do on Craigslist? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. So for those of you Gen Zers. Craigslist was like Facebook marketplace, <laughs> but also had jobs. And I'm sure you know about Craigslist, but I'm just being, being completely sure. So yeah, I went to Vital Farms and that was really where all the juices started flowing. That's where I fell in love with consumer packaged goods. I fell in love with mission-based brands who really just wanted to do good by the consumer, by the planet, by their teams, by the animals that provided for us, you know? So it was, I just, and I had the greatest, I had the greatest boss. He's this British guy that we're still very good friends. We're very good friends um, now, but he was just so creative and broadened my mind, like to really look at things in certain ways to reach as many people as possible in a relatable fashion. And yeah. And shout out Jason Jones. He was the president there and a mentor as well. And yeah, that's, that's how it was. And I was there for a couple of years until another company snatched me up. And then I was there. I was there at that company for a couple of years until, until I wasn't. What were you doing within that time when I was at the farm? I mean, I know, but tell the so, audience. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, but like, let's just hit this a little harder. Karen <laughs> was, was in the baby stages of Vital Farms. Yeah. Like the early phase, right? Yeah. I was like, what? They're like eighth employee. I'm talking, this, this brand is just, it has flourished. It has grown. It has gone through a lot of amazing things and I was there when like the distribution center was in the back parking lot we would literally walk over there get our free eggs say hello to everybody working in there packing cleaning it was just it was it was just really fun you know it was like we had vegan vegetarian meals on Tuesdays with the whole team yeah, it was, it was, it was great. It was, it, it has definitely grown since then, but yeah. Cool. Yeah. Love Vital Farms. Yeah, it's good eggs. Good eggs. So what were well, you doing while I was on the chicken farm? Well, I think we both were like, let's get the F out. And I took that very literally and moved to Vietnam. <laughs> I uh, wanted to get so far away because I, I think that's when I realized, okay, like I don't, I'm not in love with fashion. Like I like, I always wanted to be creative in my job and that's it. Fashion was just like one of those ways to do that for me. And once I got in that world, I realized I think I'm, you know, so I wanted to get far away, move to Vietnam to clear my head, to figure out what I wanted. So I moved there without a place to stay. I didn't have a job. And <laughs> I, I tend to do that like with, um, with uh, decisions. I don't really think about them. I just do it. And it didn't really hit me until the plane, the 26 hour on the 26th hour of being on a plane, what I was doing. And there might've been a few tears, but then I get there and immediately a six year old kid is smoking a cigarette and people are yelling and screaming at me. And I'm like, this is it. Like, I am so excited. <laughs> was it just like you in a backpack? Is that all you had? Backpack. Yeah, immediately got screwed over by my taxi driver, like, Classic. you know, just needed to learn a lot of things in life. And did, did you already have like a place secured to stay? Like, how does this work? 
I knew like where to go. Like I knew to go to Boivian Street to look for hostels. So I knew oh. to go there. And it was easy to find a, a place to stay. It was, you know, just like a little whatever room. And then I would go into different teachers' offices and apply for jobs during the day. And I got one. Um, so I was an English teacher for maybe like six months. Um, I really was not very good at it. So I didn't last very long. Yeah. <laughs> Dang. That's nuts. And so let's fast forward again. I remember, I don't remember, I don't exactly remember what year it was or where I was, but I got a message from you and we were friends before you left. And of course you were in Vietnam, so we weren't seeing each other. We would occasionally talk, but then I got a DM from you that was like, Hey, did you do ads for Sherry Hill, our first job? And I was just like, Oh, Allison's reaching out. She like wants to learn about something. Little did I know that this woman was killing it in Vietnam doing, <laughs> knowing 20 million times the amount I did about ads and was just hustling and getting work. <laughs> So how did you start? Like, how did that even start? Like, who did you get introduced to? Who'd you learn from? Yeah, that's right. So Saigon, where I lived in Vietnam, is actually like a huge entrepreneurial hub. And I randomly moved in with this, this guy. And there was a, a couple of people in this um, apartment. And he was a part of this entrepreneurial group called Tropical MBA. Basically, they took what Tim Ferriss talked about in the four hour work week and like applied it to life. And so they there was like a hundred of these people living in Saigon, creating their own businesses, working like a free schedule, work life balance, what have you. And I was like, damn, like this is exactly what I want. And I just kind of fell into it. And then I started working for this guy who taught e-commerce courses, taught you how to create an e-commerce business. He wanted to hire um, his first employee outside of his, like his sister. And I got the job and I told him I knew how to do things that I didn't know how to do, like Facebook ads. And it was quickly uh, realized that I didn't really know, but I was going to give it all I got and uh, just started learning as much as I could. I took a ton of courses. I still take a lot of courses and on Facebook ads and, and everything because it's, it changes all the time. But um, yeah, we, we started spending about $30,000. Um, a month when I started, and by the time I left, we we're spending about three hundred thousand to five hundred thousand a month. So, and that was in like a year and a half. So, just scaled the that shit is out of it. Nuts. Yeah, that's, that's crazy. Mm -hmm. I mean, I you can say those numbers, and you think of like these big businesses, but you're talking about one man and you starting this company and a year and a half later spending half a million dollars a month, a month just on Facebook ads. That's crazy. Yeah. It was the only means for advertising that we did. It was a lot of fun. That's for sure. So, whew, well, I wish someone else would give me $500,000. I know who out there, <laughs> give me your who money. out there has some measly chump change that Allison yeah. can spend on Facebook ads to mm -hmm. kill it for you. Hit us up. Hello at Umai marketing.com. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, so we were working out there in Vietnam. He, my boss is probably the smartest person I've ever met. Um, I learned, I can't even tell you how much I learned from him, but he wanted to move back to the States to grow the team. There was like three of us at that point. And he said, I want to move to San Francisco, Austin, or Boulder. I went to school in Boulder, like lived in Austin before. I didn't really want to live in San Francisco. So I was like, Austin or Boulder? He decides on Austin. So I just basically go full circle back to Austin. That's where I started from. Ooh, thank you, Anton. Yeah. But then what happened? Uh, then I was 
two years into my job at a local pet food company. And after about, after close to two years, there was a little bit of a thing within the organization where it was just like the leadership was changing. It was, and I've always, I, I can't blame, I'm, I'm not blaming, <laughs> but I, I've always been very strong in my convictions and I am very forthright with my opinions. And it, I just was talking too much and I got laid off. What do you mean you were talking too much? Well, I mean, okay, so we had like our VP of marketing left and we got a new VP of marketing and I, it was, you know, I, I still was friends with our old VP of marketing and he was a mentor. So I was like, Hey, let's go to happy hour. And I, we planned that and news in our marketing team, they get word that I'm having happy hour with our old VP of marketing who we all liked. And so one by one, they're like, Ooh, can I come? Can I come? Can I come? And it's like, okay. So like the whole team is going to happy hour with the old VP of marketing. And in hindsight, I'm like, why wasn't I, why wasn't I aware enough to know that that current VP of marketing, if he knew that that was happening, would probably be like, what the F is happening? Like, what are y'all doing? And that's, there's like a mutiny. Yeah, exactly. And so, and I'm the ringleader, of course, I'm the one that planned it. So that among other things about just being a little bit too loud about my opinions, I guess, um, it led to a few of us being laid off. And so it was, it was half of the marketing team. Just from that one happy hour. I mean, that's the, I, I think there's the catalyst. Yeah. Okay. I, I think it was the catalyst and it was, it was so hard. It was like anybody that's been laid off knows it's such a blow to your ego. I was, I was so mortified. I remember sitting in I, my friends all took me to dinner. I'm like, how can I talk about my friends and I going to dinner during COVID? I'm like, was that allowed? Um, but it was when it was allowed and we were all sitting at dinner and I was just like, I was drained the whole day. I was just like sobbing all day. So upset. And I get a text message from who other than shouting back out to you, Jason Jones, the president AJ. and co-founder of Vital Farms. And he was like, Hey, let's have coffee. And I was like, okay. We have not talked in how long, and you're texting me the day I got laid off to say, let's he's, go have coffee. He's got some sort of sixth sense, I think. I mean, well, not the sixth sense. He's just very well connected. So <laughs> I was just like, who told you? Immediately, who told you? And he was like, ha ha, don't worry about it. Let's go to get coffee. And I was like, okay, well, he knows. Someone told him. Who told him? And so we go get coffee that week. And in between that time, I had, I was already being offered a position at another CPG here in Austin. Pretty much. Uh, they were, it was, it was, I, I almost had the job and I was really thinking to myself, do I want to do this full time? Like, what can I do? So Jason and I go get coffee and he's like, Hey, like, what's going on? What do you, what do you think about all this? And I was like, I, t I gave him the spiel and he was like, okay, well you live in Austin. It's a CPG hub, consumer packaged goods hub. There are so many brands that need your help right now. They need social media marketing help. And I was like, okay. And he was, and so long story long, the CFO of the company I got laid off from reached out to his connection who knew Jason Jones and he knows it's a very small world here in Austin. And he was like, Hey, and I am forever very much grateful to this person for doing that said, Hey, we had to let this woman go. You need to help her. Like you need to help guide her. And that's, that's what happened. So I got connected with Jason again, reconnected with him and then connected with another uh, leader in the CPG industry here in Austin. And they, they were my saving grace within a week, maybe a week and a half. I had a full client load. One was the company that almost hired me. And I told, they said, they said to me, they were like, Hey, if you're not in completely, if you're not in this to win it with us, then maybe we can work fractionally together. So I had a full workload within a week and a half. And it was just, I, 
I can try and say that it was because of my hard work and dedication, but it was a lot of who I was connected to and who I knew and who I'd built past relationships with. So that is why it's one of my biggest pieces of advice to people, especially just starting out in whatever industry you're in is make connections 110%. That is what is going to propel you forward. Right. So, but make real connections. I, I mean, I think you're so good at keeping up with past people that you've worked with and things like that. And it's, you know, you got to put in some effort. Yeah, yeah. It can't be fake. I mean, and I'm, I'm always like, I would rather have a very close group of really good friends than have a million friends. And that's how I feel when it comes to work as well. So yeah, I did that for a while. Um, and the whole time I was just thinking to myself, advertising is not my specialty. I, I've done it. I've spent hundreds of thousands of dollars on it. Did I know exactly what I was doing the whole time? No. Did I, do I want to work with somebody who knows it a million times better than I do? Yes. And so how many times did I ask you like, Hey, are you ready? Like, are you, times, yeah. <laughs> like I'm a texting you like really late at night. I'm like, I'm having these like feelings within me. Are you ready? <laughs> Yeah, no, it's funny because I kind of was, so we, we brought the company back to Austin and we grew it. So we had like a full marketing team, um, a full team of maybe like 12 people. And I had already been there like two, two years. Um, we moved fast. Uh, The digital world moves fast. That's for sure. Um, but I had been there two years and then all of a sudden I found myself you know, back in Austin with the team, but in an office. And I really think that was my, the downside for me. Every single day I drove 20 minutes, which sounds not like a lot, but for me, you know, it was, I drove, you know, my commute and I sat at my desk and I worked nine to five, you know, and it just isn't how I operate. So it just started weighing on me. And then Karen kept bugging me. (laughs) Hey, and I'm glad she did. And I knew that I'd kind of hit a roof there. Um, you know, where, where was I going to go from here? Um, I absorbed everything that my boss, and just like you said, he was my mentor, really. I learned everything I think I could from him. I wanted to do something new and learn some new things. And I said, let's, you know, I think I, I called my boss and then I called you and I said, okay, let's do it. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I lost my mind. I was working, we were, I was working at Cosmic Coffee, I think that was, and you're like, hey, and you're always, you always do things really professionally. That's one oh. thing about you that you always, or like you, as professionally, like you think about doing it that way. And I love that. So you're like, hey, you didn't call me and you're like, I'm in. And like, we screamed on the phone. That's not how it was. You're like, hey, let's meet. <laughs> so we, we met at, over coffee and you were like, I, I, I'm ready. And I was, I just, I couldn't believe it. But I was like, when you say you do, you're going to do things, you do them. So it, it happened. And I mean, I never, I, I remember that in my interview for my, the pet food job, they were like, where do you see yourself in five years? That question. And I said, owning my own agency. And I, I, I didn't believe it. I like, it came out of my mouth and I was like, Oh, I'm going to sound like, yeah, I'm going to sound like I'm a badass overachiever. Like I'm going to get it done. And like within two years it happened and I, it, it couldn't have happened without you. Like this agency is a a love, our love child. It is. And I love it. <laughs> I love it so much. And I love our love child. I do. <laughs> and I, people always say like, don't get in business with your friends. And I, I mean, I, that's true for a lot of people and a lot of my personal friends, but we bring, we are opposites in so many ways that just make the business work. Yeah. So like, not, honestly, yeah. we are yin and yang. I know we say that and probably a lot of people think that's so lame, but it's so true. Like where I fall, you pick up and vice versa. Like it's, it's actually like the complete opposite, but then we come together on the big important things. And I think that's what matters, but 
Yeah. I mean, it's not easy either. Yeah, not easy. And and we do come together for the big important things, but we like we have to talk through some things, right? It's like mm-hmm. not everything that we want to do we agree on. Yeah. But it's it really is about just talking through it. And I think that that's what we all have to do, whether you're friends in business or family in business or in business with people you don't care about. <laughs> right. And at the end of the day, I mean, even when it's a hard conversation, I always know that we made the best decision or we produced the best product or service. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, and the team is growing. We have, we have a marketing manager, Holly, who's just, I cannot say enough good things about this woman. I mean, I hope she never leaves us. I know someday she will, and she'll need to, to fly and grow her wings, but she's just the, the greatest, I feel. We're just the, we're so lucky, and I remember her interview in Cosmo Coffee again, mm-hmm. Austin, Texas, and she left, and we both just looked at each other, and we were like, yep, immediately. Yeah. yeah, we knew immediately. I don't know if that's, like, normal. I think that that's really lucky. Yeah, I just, like, it's so, it is so rare to find, like, an untapped, like, diamond, <laughs> like, mm-hmm. she has a diamond, um, but yeah. Yeah, and just hired our fourth full-time employee, and she starts on Monday, and we're just, I mean, this, what, it's going to be two years in September, which is so no. crazy. How has it been two years? No. Yeah, but it's okay. been, yeah. It's, it's so soon. I know. Wow. So that's the story. <laughs> yeah. So that is the story of how we met, how we grew apart. Well, not grew apart, but grew separately. Grew separately. And then, and then came together. <laughs> like a yin and a yang situation. Yeah. But there's so much more to tell. There's yeah. so much, you know, more that we can't wait to share. Mm-hmm. For another day and we want to hear from you guys what's interesting what do you want to know more about what do you want to know less about we know you didn't ask for this but we gave it to you mm-hmm. and we'll okay. continue to do that so <laughs> Ooh, my social circle is a cpg agency driven podcast based out of austin texas we're excited to share more behind the scene insights chats with industry leaders and whatever else we learn along the way follow us on instagram at umai marketing or check out our website, umaymarketing.com. Catch you back here soon.